just found a few minutes ago, a big nor'easter comes through and blows all the sandbars into a giant pile. <laughs> Um, so this really depicts that it's you know one or two days after the nor'easter, you come up to a spot on the beach that you know yesterday had that different structure, and all of a sudden the structure is completely changed. Sometimes for the worse. Sometimes it's just a big flat three-foot sandbar going out for miles, and you're not catching anything because there's no bait there. The water's too skinny, and it's just not worth fishing. Sometimes you show up and you see this. This is a beautiful, beautiful sign for a surf caster in my mind. Um, I've fished a spot like this this year along Smith Point beaches that was so productive, it was just sick fishing. It was, uh, they weren't giants, but when I ran into the spot, it was just nonstop action for about two hours straight until finally the tide, the tide basically rose enough that the bait fish were finally able to escape its little trap and get out. So picture a nor'easter blowing along the South Shore Long Island beach, taking these sandbars that were over here and piling them up. At times, it'll create, and in, in the meantime, right, the beach swell, right, the undercurrent or the rips are digging a huge trough here, piling the sand up here, piling the sand up here. You'll see a real obvious, you know, burst of wave structure coming over this <coughs> now very large bar that extends close to that point on the beach. And this doesn't always have to have a point here. I've come to this and seen very little points. But usually, you're going to see where these almost look like they connect. This water is very shallow. Bait fish of all sorts get trapped in here. And this is a bass paradise. Bass or bluefish, it doesn't really matter. They are going to come in here and trap this bait. It's all trying to escape from here. And the bass are basically coming in over here and just having a ball. I've, seen, I've witnessed the bass where, where bait's trying to escape over this maybe one foot, two foot, you know, breach in the sand and the bass and the bait are killing them right in this structure. I mean, they're just plowing them right across it. It's a, it's a great sign. You run up to that as a surf angler. I don't know about you guys. You see something on the surf and you see that bait busting by fish. I don't know about you, but I'm running. <laughs> I'm always running. My friends are, what are you doing? I was like, I gotta get there. They'll be there in 15 minutes, but I still have to run like a maniac. I can't help it. Well, sometimes they take off. Just gotta run to it. Um, so this is a really sweet, ideal situation. Um, Typically something that happens after a strong storm, watch for them. Go back to that spot that you saw that nice sandbar structure the, you know, two, three days before the storm. Uh, I also prefer to wait about two days after any nor'easter because the water is, tends to be so dirty that it's almost unfishable. Uh, and if I do go, to, you know, just so anxious I gotta get out, I'll probably go to another spot that really wasn't affected, some back bay or harbor. But here, may I, I may go into this trough and throw bait. I may throw chunks into that spot. Anybody have any questions about this? Make sense? Sure. Um, there's this place that my dad and 